The way in which we see the world has a remarkable layered quality that's often overlooked. Our visual system instantly and seemingly effortlessly presents us with perceptions of the varying spectral reflectances of objects and of the varying intensity and spectral composition of the light falling on those objects. We call these perceptions of spectral properties colours. Because we're mortal objects ourselves, the colours we notice most are those of other objects. The colour we perceive as belonging to an object is the way in which we perceive its physical property of spectral reflectance, that is, the proportion of the light of each wavelength that the object reflects, as far as this is accessible to our visual system. So in this image, we perceive a high chroma orange cube on a black and white tiled floor. And we perceive these objects as having the same color belonging to them in the light and in the shadow. For example, we perceive the lighter colored tiles in the floor as being white things, even though the amount of light reaching our eyes from them in different areas varies greatly. We might not notice it, but our perception of the colours of objects is always accompanied by a perception of illumination. This illumination can also vary in colour, but in this image we perceive achromatic or white light illumination, varying only in brightness. White, as a colour of light, is the way in which we perceive an overall balance of spectral composition similar to that of daylight, again, as detected by our visual system. Unsurprisingly, colours perceived as belonging to objects are called object colours, and colours perceived as belonging to illumination are called illumination colours. But note that object colours are defined simply as perceptions. Now, you might perceive the colour of an object to be an inherent property belonging to the object irrespective of the illumination and viewing conditions, but this perception of a fixed inherent colour in objects is illusory. Object colours, like all perceived colours, often vary depending on the illumination, the viewing conditions and the observer. Light reflecting objects exhibit a high degree of constancy of object colour at different intensities of the same illumination, which is why these colours are perceived as belonging to the object. But this degree of constancy is reduced under different kinds of illumination, on different backgrounds and for different observers. And there is no principled way to maintain that any one of these object colour perceptions is the true or inherent colour. But how does our visual system know, for example, which areas are dark because they're dimly lit and which are dark because they're occupied by light absorbing objects? It may seem to us that we simply see these variations in illumination and object colour, but there's no way for our eyes to directly determine the amount of light falling on an object or the proportion of light of each wavelength that the object reflects. Instead, our visual system instantly and automatically passes the pattern of light reaching our eyes into a combination of perceptions of reflectance and illumination that seems most likely to account for this pattern. This computation normally occurs without requiring any conscious intellectual activity from us and seems to be based on prior experience of the world. Notice that we experience these perceptions of object colour and illumination colour superimposed in the same rectangle, as if the object colour is seen through the illumination. This digital photograph merely emulates within limits the variations in light reaching the eye from some illuminated objects. But few of us would insist that they perceive a plate coloured grey and white, or a banana that is half yellow and half olive. 
I think most of us will immediately perceive three objects, each uniformly coloured but with its own object colour. A yellow banana, a white plate and a brown wooden tabletop. And also, within the same square image, a pattern of illumination or light and shade. The illumination colours here are slightly chromatic and on the plate there is an additional contribution of highlights or specular reflections of a light source classified as luminous colour. Once again, we experience these perceptions of object colour and illumination colour immediately without the need for any conscious intellectual activity. This ability to rapidly, automatically and unconsciously parse variations in the light reaching our eyes from across the visual field into colour perceptions relating to objects and illumination is surely the most astonishing feature of our visual system. It's only because this remarkable capacity of our visual system exists and is generally very effective that we perceive objects as having relatively constant colours belonging to them and not just a constantly varying appearance. Occasionally though, two quite different solutions are possible and the internet melts down. This has been an excerpt from a presentation, Colours of Objects and Colours of Light, to be uh, presented at the Colour Society of Australia 2023 National Conference to be held in Perth, Western Australia on October 12th to 15th. Registration for in-person and Zoom attendance is now open on the CSA website. Thanks for listening.